Sebastian. Hi, I'm Joachim Sebastian, founder of Everpeaks Consulting. Uh, welcome to uh, the panel session for local brands expanding globally. Um, together with me here today, we have uh, Mr. Andrew De Jesus, we have Debbie Chai and Leanne De Los Reyes, all right? Um, each of them represent a very specialized, uh, focused kind of entrepreneurship journey, different entrepreneurship journey, and we'll be asking them some critical questions about how they expanded their brands globally, right? So we have different businesses from uh, breast milk-based businesses to uh, fashion and beauty and into um, furniture, right? So different categories here, and they all have uh, deep insights about the business and we're very happy to have each and every one of you here today. Uh, firstly, again, thanks to Pioneer for organizing this event and we appreciate you um, thinking about the small business owners to, uh, during the COVID-19 um, the COVID pandemic that has affected businesses globally. We want to use this opportunity to, number one, share some insights with each and every one of you who is uh, listening to this uh, panel session today. And we also want to give the opportunity for all the brands uh, featured here as well to potentially connect with consumers and customers around the world. So please go to the exhibit session and interact with the brands that are there. Um, it is a very trying time for a lot of businesses here today, and we hope we, we can get your support as well. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to start the introductions with myself first, uh, what I do in my background, and then we can go with uh, Mr. Andrew, then we'll continue with Leanne, and then we'll go with Debbie. Is that okay, everybody? Sure, go okay, ahead. all good. Okay, so just a bit about myself. I, my name is Joachim Sebastian. I am the founder of three different companies uh, in Malaysia, uh, Everpeaks Consulting, um, Kratos Motorsports, and Creative Ice Rambo. Uh, I'll focus on Everpeaks, which is an e-commerce enabler for the ecosystem. We help brands grow globally through the global marketplaces, such as Amazon and eBay. We are the first Amazon service Partner, sorry, first Amazon service provider network member and eBay channel partner in Malaysia. We also are partners with Shopify to enable brands to grow their websites. And we function as an outsourced team for brand owners around the world to um, enable their global e-commerce business model, uh, where they don't have to find expert talent, they don't have to search for um, this expertise, which is most of the time not easy to find, right? Specialized in e-commerce and we work together closely with brands globally. Okay, that's me. I'll pass the introduction to Mr. Andrew. Go ahead. Hi, Joe. Thanks. So I'm Andrew Dasus. I am currently a CEO of uh, PJ Powerwood. So basically we are uh, OEM supplier doing uh, furniture, uh, selling globally, both offline and online, just the same as Joe. Uh, so we have our brands in Amazon and uh, all major uh, retailers we're doing offline with Walmart, Walmart.com, right there. Uh, same as Joe, handling three businesses. So so I'm also a partner with uh, N Square e-commerce, we're an enabler based in Southeast Asia. Uh, and also Weeks Trading, a company based in the Philippines, which um, distributes uh, all omni-channel as well. So uh, we, PJ Wood is basically the largest uh, exporter out of Thailand. Basically, we focus on sustainability. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, we go next to uh, Lian, please. Hi, uh, my name is Lian. I am from originally from the Philippines, but I'm currently based in Canada where I'm trying to do my business, which is Milk the Mom Inc. So Milk Stock, we uh, together with the help of manufacturers, of course, I, I created lactation drinks for mothers, breastfeeding mothers specifically. So I set, I initially started um, online, which is Amazon. I'm doing Shopify, and slowly I'm getting into brick and mortar to retail, you know, retail stores and community shops. All right, thank you, Leanne. So we've got already two Amazon uh, sellers over here, so we can actually tune in and just focus on what's the biggest problems you had on Amazon. I'm sure we have a, a huge list of things to talk about, right? Uh, but then uh, before we go into that, uh, Ms. Debbie, uh, take it away. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me today. I'm Debbie Chai and I own Ray Smiths. Uh, it's a brand of precision manicure tools. So before this, I spent a decade as a business news reporter and editor and that career took me 
uh, most recently to New York City, where about 70% of everything that I bought was purchased online. So um, at the time, I rarely needed to walk into a brick and mortar store unless it was to try on some shoes or to have a meal at a restaurant. So when I returned to Singapore, where I'm from, uh, I had the opportunity to learn firsthand about the manufacturing of cuticle nippers. And that was how I started selling nail beauty tools. Um, and I knew that I needed to find a ready worldwide audience for my products. So I chose Amazon as my e-commerce platform. So that's me, Amazon as well. Um, that's about six years ago. So now I sell on uh, 11 Amazon marketplaces around the world. I mainly source from um, Vietnam and China, but I'm always on the lookout in other countries for uh, high performance products that are just a little bit better than what is widely available. Awesome, awesome. So some some sourcing strategies that uh, Debbie has already started to share with you guys. So uh, stay tuned. I'm sure there's a lot more insights that each of our esteemed panelists uh, will be able to share with you uh, throughout our conversation here today. So I'm going to kick the ball off uh, straight away. Let's dive in deep. Uh, we don't want to waste uh, time with uh, the the attention that we're getting with this panel. So let's go straight into it. So Andrew, first step in expanding globally, what do you, what did you do bef to actually enable uh, export sales for your business? So uh, like you came, so we started basically as a B2B OEM supplier for all these major retailers. Then our goal was to set up our own brand. Uh, so initially I think the first step is to have a very clear mindset of what you're going to do. Uh, just because what how we see this thing, it's a long-term business wherein there's going to be pains initially. So the very first thing that we have to do is make sure that you have the mindset there. And in my case, because we, we already have the core business, right? So I have to find the correct person to be able to go through the challenges. The, for example, like each country, for example, the in, uh, importer of record of Canada will be different from US or Australia. So I have to find the correct person to manage this business. We're in because there's no rule book here. Uh, mm -hmm. You just have to fix the problem along the way. Finding the correct person. And of course, we have to make sure that we have the correct product that is globally correct. In our case, we have already tested our product. So we already have the offline experience there. What we don't have is the brand recognition. Uh, so again, it goes back to me mindset having the correct person, if you're the one doing it by yourself, you just have to have like the, the, the correct mindset and just like learn learn things along the way. Don't aim for perfection, just learn things along the way. Yeah, definitely, uh, yeah, so basically definitely. Yeah, yes. So so basically you cannot learn everything offhand. Yeah, so that's how, how we started it. Uh, yeah, that's it for my, my side. All right, perfect. I mean, two, three great insights there. First is don't try to be perfect when you want to execute because then you won't even take your first step forward, right? Second thing is get the right person and of course the right product to fit the market. Now, uh, Mr. Andrew is a pretty unique uh, chap over here because he's actually a Filipino who is doing great uh, work in, in Thailand, right? So he had to move into a different country, learn the ecosystem, probably um, figure out how things work over there as well. And I'm sure that has helped him uh, normalize or actually execute a very um, effective export strategy, right? So now let's move to uh, Lian a bit. So um, you've been doing quite a number of things, right? You came from the grassroots, like real grassroots level development uh, of your business. What, what was the biggest difficulty or the largest setback that you've ever, you've experienced in trying to establish yourself because you know you come from a background of uh, maybe working for someone else and you started your entrepreneurship journey in a sometimes considered uh, controversial uh, product right so yes. would you share a bit about that please okay so like like what joe saying i would say um, I because my product is very niche. First, so first, what is that product? Um, it's lactation coffee and tea for breastfeeding mothers. So as you can see, I have a very limited targeted market for so breastfeeding mm -hmm. mothers specifically. And dealing with food in the first place is kind of tricky, especially if you're, you know, I'm very sure working working with food even locally is difficult. What more like bringing food to the U.S., bringing food to Canada, which was which is I was I would say is like the most difficult 
part of it. I, um, the development part is for me because it started as a passion project. So this, I'm, of course, it's funny. I, I told myself, if nobody buys them, I will drink them all. That's my initial, you know, that's my initial, that's, that, that's my initial thought. I told myself, but I was, initially I was thinking very small because I really wanted to launch it in the Philippines. Where, where where I came from and moringa which is the very uh an ingredient of my product is coming from there but when, when when I thought about I started doing my research I started to know the US market oh people are starting to know moringa I, you know they have the knowledge about it so I thought of like um iterating the product in a sense that it will also fit with the US market so aside from moringa I included ingredients that uh, Americans eat, Americans drink. And that's when yes. how I started, like, I started to get into the US marketplace. So the first step uh, for sure in expanding globally is knowing your market and the buying power of Asians and the buying power of Americans are very different. Initially, I was thinking- Definitely, small. definitely. I was thinking very small, you know, like in terms of pricing, you know, you, you, need, you need to do premium to what you're giving to your customers. So I was thinking this. So, so Ian, uh, just to uh, elaborate on that a bit more, you say that you are not really prepared to price your products uh, in an export market in US, right? And this is something that we see with a lot of companies where, you know, us as Asians, we're very humble and we're very, oh, you know, I want to sell it with value for my clients. And and again, we're Asians. We like our discounts, right? We love our offers. We love our promotions. Without that, it's not going to work. So uh, was this a major setback you started off when you priced your product probably too cheap? Yes. I, I Initially, that, that was everyone that i talked to because of course i i talked to people like you joe that you know amazon consultants you know people who are experts and the first thing they told me you're selling it cheap it's like your price is too low because i was you know i was in the mindset of se uh, selling to filipinos you know selling to asians and i wasn't i wasn't thinking about the americans buying power yeah so that's great. That's a great insight that you shared because a lot of small business owners and those who just start their journey on selling products, they don't understand the potential of the export markets, number one. And sometimes it's not about throwing prices, right? Then you're going to go against the giant manufacturing hub of China if you're playing on prices. It's, it's not something that most sellers can actually do unless you have that capacity. So for the small business owner, for the guys who are just going on, on Amazon or e-commerce, um, now I want to take this question to uh, Debbie. Debbie, you're in one of the most competitive categories on online ever, everywhere, right? If you talk about beauty, um, expanding to uh, the nails and, and whatever else products in that entire region, whether it's cosmetics, eyelashes, uh, nail polish, is are... Uh, hyper competitive categories which also have major major big players coming into the game right they're coming for your share of the market so what did you do to overcome these major barriers number one and in your early stages right everything's short you don't have enough money you don't have enough inventory you don't have enough cash flow you don't have enough customers so everything's short what's the what's one resource that you would choose to have when you were just starting to expand? Okay, so two part question. The first part was how do I deal Compete, with the yeah. competition, right? Um, actually, yeah. the product that I sell is super niche. So I, I know that I cannot get an advantage selling lipstick or makeup um, or nail polish. I'm not familiar with these products as well. Um, but I'm familiar mm. with the manufacturing of cuticle nippers, which are stainless steel cutters. So it's mm -hmm. not a sexy product at all. It's steel based. It's, uh, we mm -hmm. talk about chrome plating, gold plating, and the cutting edges. So it's a very technical and um, it's all about uh, German techniques uh, used mm -hmm. to make these products. So I went the niche way. I didn't want to take on the big uh, makeup brands. Um, so that started me off. And now 
when my brand becomes a little bit more established, then I can put in some more common products like nail polish, for example, um, and to expand my range of nail beauty tools. Um, so that's that part of it. Um, I think mm -hmm. when you choose a product to sell, you have to be very careful to check the competition first. Too yes. crowded, don't go there. Don't, nope. Um, <laughs> don't go there. So the other part of the question is what I wish that I had um, now, uh, no, what I wish that um, I had back then that could help me expand my business um, is more digital uh, solutions or apps. So compared to six years ago, there are a lot more lightweight apps um, that I can subscribe to just for a few dollars a month. It can help me with accounting, with payments, with inventory management, with uh, cost per click advertising. So it's a lot easier today to be a startup um, and to have help, um, be able to subscribe to these apps from all over the world. You're not limited to your own um, apps in your own marketplace, it's all online. Yeah. Um, and, and for example, Payoneer, right? The online payment systems like Payoneer allow me to do business internationally using multiple currencies. And the fees are really low compared to traditional banks. So they've lowered the cost of doing international business. And so then becomes the, the world is our oyster. Perfect. Oh, wonderful answer. So again, so many insights. I hope you guys are paying attention to what Debbie has just shared. Uh, she shared some of the fundamental principles of how you do market expansion, right? If you choose to compete in a very uh, saturated niche, you're going to need big money, big resources to overcome the barriers of entry. But Debbie overcame that by having such an ultra niche product that allowed her to penetrate the market and build a brand. Now, remember, when you sell products, if it's uh, nail extensions or it's nails itself, it still hits the same person. A person who has nails has hair, right? I mean, most of the time. A person who has hair has lips. So uh, wh whoever does not have lips or hair, I'm, I'm pretty sorry, but you know, generally you do, right? So that's another market there that once you build a brand, you can expand upon. So this is essentially captivating or capturing your audience and then remarketing and upselling a different kind of product, which is a typical e-commerce strategy. But most people don't understand the nuances of why you do so and which steps to do first. So Debbie, you nailed it on the, you really hit it, uh, hit the nail on the head with that. And thanks for sharing your particular journey when you first started, right? So um, as you journey along as an entrepreneur from six years ago until now, uh, as well as uh, for Leanne and Andrew, you must have gone through a lot of instances where like right now the eyes that you see your world is different from the eyes at the start is there an instance or an opportunity that you want to share with uh, fellow entrepreneurs over here about things that they usually will miss out on at the early stages of their uh, entrepreneurship venture versus what you know now so is there an opportunity that you see most fellow entrepreneurs ignore and what do you think it is so we we'll start with andrew first Uh, Andrew, you're muted, Andrew. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so basically, I think one one thing that is not on top of our mind normally is how smart the consumers are today. So mm -hmm. we always would think that it's always price, 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 right? Of course, it's always price, right? In, in, <laughs> in, <laughs> I mean, but there's, I think, uh, as 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 we grow the market, as e-commerce matures more, uh, and also as, as our consumers be become more mature, uh, we are normally underestimating the, 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 the how smart our customers are. So in our case, it's not just price. We are telling, we are focusing for, for our brand, we are focusing on sustainability. This is one thing that we want to communicate to the customers. Mm. that we are not only selling uh, nice, a good nice. product, but something that is also helping the environment. Reminding them of our purpose as a company that, we, in our case, our internal purpose is to spread in Made in Thailand, sustainable home and living products around the world. So I think uh, we always have to remind ourselves that the customers is, uh, is becoming very smart every day. Especially with all the yeah, customers are king, and and they are 
very well educated at this juncture, right? Very accurate point. So you don't uh, underestimate your customers and, and treat them with respect and you have a chance of, you know, getting somewhere. Um, Debbie, would you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, sure. I think for me, uh, a lot of beauty entrepreneurs limit themselves to just thinking local. So this is this the topic of this panel is mm. very, very appropriate because like I was worried too when I started to expand into other markets. But these days it's a lot easier. Mm. Um, Amazon makes it really, really simple for you. Just click up a button, you can go to, you know, launch in a new market. So I think business owners should definitely take the leap and just, just do it. Yeah, export, definitely. Export is the way to go. When I first started my journey six years ago, I was hunting around and trying to figure out how do I get money back from the US, right? And that's where I, I stumbled upon Peonia and I, woohoo, it works. I was amazed. And that was like six years back, uh, quite similar time frame that we started. And and through the journey, of course, at, at the same exact experience that you have, you see the apps and tools and processes improving year on year on year, making it so easy to penetrate the market with just a PC and a person behind the screen, right? So that's an amazing thing. Uh, Lian, do you have something that you you know uh, is a huge opportunity that you've seen uh, and most people actually ignore? Yes. Um, well, specifically, my, pro my, my the product that I got to install, the reason why I put it into the US because I haven't seen anything like it. You can see it in Asia, in the Philippines. So when I saw that, of course, everyone goes to Amazon, you search I, it's the first place that I search and I want to find this product. Oh, I cannot find it there. So it's like, you know, the, the, the bells rang. I can bring it to the US, you know, because you can find anything on Amazon, like literally everything. But yeah, um, in terms good. of like, what I wish I knew before I even started, I, I cannot stress this enough. You have to start it right from the start. When I say, because I'm starting very small, I try to bypass some things like licenses, you know, the banking, like every, like I think Debbie, Debbie were mentioning about the currency exchange. That was like a trap that I came, that I came to in the beginning. It's like when I started Amazon, it's going to my, I was living in Singapore then, it's going to my Singapore bank. It's getting, you know, getting, when it goes to the Singapore bank, it gets lower, like the value because it, it's of the currency exchange. That's when I actually stumbled upon Pioneer. I used mm -hmm. Pioneer. Because when you use Pioneer, the money goes straight to, into, the, into the account with no, you know, mm. very minimal fees and you get it in US dollars, which is the same money that I pay to my suppliers. Exactly, exactly. So that was one of the core value propositions that a lot of people don't understand, uh, even, even about Pioneer, right? Because Pioneer mm. transacts your financial transactions when you withdraw from Amazon at mid market rate and they're very transparent about the fees and things like that. So other competitors, I'm not going to mention who they are, of course, uh, don't do that. And they hide a lot of the fees in the conversion rate and people don't understand and don't see it. So they don't realize that that's a huge differential factor there. Very fair, fair point. So now let's tune down from all the business stuff. Let's talk about being an entrepreneur itself. So all of us here are, you know, had the struggles of starting a company, hiring people, growing a team, uh, not affording to pay yourself while you pay your staff. Uh, I, is anybody, has anybody gone through that as well? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a pretty standard entrepreneur uh, journey, right? So it's, at, it's a lot of times quite tough. It's a very tough journey and a lot of times quite lonely, right? So what did you do to keep yourself motivated? Um, through these kind of situations, like, uh, I mean, Leanne, you started your business uh, probably off the back of working a full-time job, right? Yes. Right. So like um, a, how do you, sorry, go ahead. It's a side hustle turned to a full-time job. Yeah, crazy time. So how do you keep yourself motivated and still have enough energy to build your business while you're working a, a job and trying to figure out the problems that come with entrepreneurship? So give me one instance of how you keep yourself motivated. Um, things like this, networking and talking to like-minded people. It's very important. Mm. It's very, very important. I can stress so it because right now- You had a community special... around you? Sorry? Mm. Sorry? You had a community around you to support you during your time when you first was doing this? A community, I mean, a group of friends or maybe people who are doing business as well? 
Yeah, yeah, people doing business. I cannot count how many Facebook groups I have joined in. Ask questions, get consultants. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like any, any talk to anyone, anything you think can help. Of course, you don't need to get you take on everything that they say, but you know, it's very important. You're open to all possibilities. You know, like Joe, like you, you you've mentioned that you do consultancy. Which, mm -hmm. which is one step that also took before because it's very, it's very, very helpful. Amazing. Thanks. Thanks. You support all uh, the consultants like us, <laughs> I guess. Uh, Debbie, what's your, what's your um, take on how you keep it started through the tough times? Beauty, beauty is not an easy industry. I, I give hats off to you. So how do you keep yourself motivated? Uh, this is a pertinent question for me because when I started my uh, e-commerce journey, I, I didn't know anybody who had succeeded in it personally. I didn't know anybody personally. So I depended a lot. Uh, yeah. It's quite basic. I mean, I depended a lot on my family and my close friends and they've just been supportive because they believe in what I'm trying to do. Um, but in the past year, I've met and connected with a lot of other entrepreneurs who are in the same boat and we share insights and we encourage each other along. So like talking to people like you guys is really uh, reaffirming. Great. Perfect. Uh, you see, a lot of times that, you know, even, even all of you who are listening to us today, we're not just a face, right? The guy, we were people behind the screens. We go through the same journeys. We have our insecurities. We likely walk the same path you are walking right now and it's just at a different stage in time so uh, even those you see as greatly successful come likely from humble backgrounds and are, are more than willing to connect with you and share the information and and you know support your journey as well entrepreneurs do that so uh for for those who are tuning into our session today Remember, if you don't take that first step forward to try to connect with someone else, you'll never know, right? Don't assume that they don't care. Don't assume that they, they won't help you. And there are a lot of great people out there. Like when I bugged the hell out of Pioneer, uh, they reached out and, and we worked together for about six years after that. And it only happened because I reached out. So, you know, remember to reach out. And, and just uh, before we move to the next question, Andrew, you shifted country. So yes. that's must be something big so how, how did you keep motivated and what was your motivation to move to, to thailand no actually because of my my wife so so that's the main reason uh <laughs> so my, my, yeah but but okay. overall yeah yeah i think uh it's good to hear from you guys that uh one of the things is like reaching out right normally entrepreneurs would only see or read in the news or the positive things but in reality, there's a lot of uh, dips going on the background, right? So in my case, I think always reminding myself of the purpose of why we are doing this thing. Uh, it, it, specifically in my case, like like uh, roughly we have around a thousand employees, uh, both offline, online, right? Supporting. So our e-commerce still business uh, business is still small, but roughly reminding myself of the people who relies on us for their own personal livelihood is already enough motivation for me to keep on going every day it's just the same uh what i remind my teammates is basically hey you guys we all here for one reason right to make sure that uh our families uh can survive at the same time if you can find other secondary purpose to do good for the community so in our case like i i will always remind my teammates like, hey, we're doing things in Amazon, we're spreading things around the world. Let's make sure that when people see this product, when they see the made in Thailand, we are all proud of it. So again, what whatever works for you, but finding your purpose is gonna give you energy day in and day out, whether it's like earning a livelihood for your family, doing something for the community, find that purpose, then, then that's gonna help you day in and day out. Perfect. That's that's strong. That's strong. I mean, motivation from within is always the strongest. And to build uh, uh, your sense of self based on what you do for others again is a noble noble cause. And there are many entrepreneurs who share that spirit. Uh, they they are not there to just get a quick buck. They're not there to just get rich. They're there to build uh, build a life together with themselves and their team. So uh, sometimes it's hard. To 
translate that uh, sometimes the team doesn't know sometimes the economy doesn't know sometimes uh, market doesn't care but that's what the journey is right being an entrepreneur you you you're breaking the iceberg you're you're battling your own journey there and it's tough it's tough right so um we're running short in time it's been an exciting panel here so i'm going to end with one last question to each of you guys there and i will start with debbie for this um what is your one one single one best advice to give to attendees who are looking to expand globally now don't overlap with what you've said in the past uh something that's close to heart something that you know you feel personally about your journey in entrepreneurship each of us have paid the price in blood sweat and tears to get to where we are right now i believe each of you have as well uh from your journey and from your, your stories that you've shared with us so Choose one piece of advice and let's share it with uh, our attendees of the session today. Debbie? Yeah. Uh, my advice is to do your due diligence, is to do your research mm. so that you reduce the likelihood of facing any obstacles or any selling friction. And then once you do your research properly, don't wait, just go for it. Start your business, expand. Perfect. Exactly. Uh, do your due diligence to reduce your risks minimize your losses do your homework don't just jump in but then don't stay doing research your whole life right because then you don't move so that's a that's a strong point there uh lian would you want to share yours in my case seek help but make sure it's the right one like you can find all the help you can see online you can learn everything but you need it's sort of a due diligence process uh process as well make sure that you're getting the right help. Perfect, exactly. And um, everybody online has an opinion, right? Everybody wants to tell you what to do, but you choose uh, the right people to listen to. That's that's very key. And and that's part about building a community and something that, you know, um, uh, places like Payonia do well. So they bring many people together under a different umbrella of FinTech, but these are entrepreneurs, right? And they're somehow va validated because, hey, the Payonia users, they somehow have achieved certain number of sales if not paying is not going to invite them to speak right so you know these are things that you can listen to all your local communities or your local uh, figureheads in entrepreneurship great advice okay andrew would you want to give your your piece of advice to the attendees yeah so i think we've talked a little about like uh building a good team uh and then going through the dip so but uh, i think that my bottom line here is uh test your assumptions uh basic test your assumptions if it doesn't work it's okay move on uh don't don't basically don't be afraid of mistakes mistakes will always happen it's how you react to mistakes exactly exactly there is no link without mistakes mistakes are the best way you learn but of course uh, as what debbie said try to minimize the cost of those mistakes right do your due diligence right. as much as you can but go ahead go right on and 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 break that ice right so uh, we are actually at the end of our session today, uh, and I'd like to thank all the attendees for joining us uh, throughout this 25 minutes, a uh, very short and impactful session. I want to thank uh, Mr. Andrew De Jesus, uh, who was willing to share his journey across uh, being in the, uh, the furniture-based industry, uh, sustainable furniture. Uh, Leanne, for being uh, a person who has gone into such a a niche product and again i'm very sure backlash and whatever not still willing to come in front here and and share her journey with us and and debbie as well a journalist well imagine from that journalism to beauty right now so a different take i hope you guys uh, remember their names connect to them on linkedin uh, ask some questions and and of course uh, reach out if you're within their ecosystem and 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 talk to them i'm pretty sure they can connect you with a lot more people that can help support your journey